Thank you very much. What a pleasure to be here. Um, I want to start by thanking my, uh, the, the, the pre-speakers, um, Mr. Yoon and Mr. Son. Um, pretty impressive that uh, they've, they've come out here to lend their thoughts and their, uh, their opinions and to open this event. Uh, I want to thank E Daily for putting this event together. Um, uh, I was in Korea about two months ago for Korea Blockchain Week. It was my first time, and uh, I was truly blown away by the amount of interest in security token offerings. Uh, in fact, the knowledge of security token offerings that that, that existed um, in uh, in in the people that I spoke to, and it was clear that. You know, Korea is going to be a leading force in rolling out security token offerings globally, um, just like it has been a leading force in a lot of uh, uh, a lot of early technology adoption and uh, and, and 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 other things like that. Um, my name is Bob Ejadami. I'm the uh, VP of Capital Markets with INX. Um, and uh, I want to talk today about uh, lessons on how to prepare for a tokenized future because INX um, has been doing security token offerings and all of the complexity around putting that together uh, for the last six years. So we have six years of experience in this, in this new space um, under our belts and uh, it is our responsibility to share this knowledge and you know, provide some lessons to uh, other, uh, other participants or future participants in this market, whether that is the regulators themselves who will need support, um, exchanges, um, payment service providers, and uh, even community leaders who are going to be a voice of the security token space and have to really have an understanding of what it means um, to, uh, to promote it. <clears throat> so I will talk about INX, a little bit about the future that is tokenized, as we've just heard from, uh, from the earlier speakers. It is clear that this future is, 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 is pretty much here, and it's about rolling out this future safely. Um, I'll talk about some use cases, uh, asset classes that can be uh, represented through security tokens, um, and then, you know, some lessons for the tokenized future. So, INX. Um, the company was founded six years ago in 2017, which was pretty early for, you know, for the security token space. But if you remember, in 2017, we had the ICOs, the ICO bubble of the, at the time, where companies all over the world um, where, or, or maybe not even companies, but entities were just raising huge amounts of capital um, by saying, we are doing an ICO, and it's going to be the greatest thing ever, and here is a white paper. And people were going crazy and just throwing money at these illegal investments. Uh, and as we all know, a lot of money was, was lost in, at the time. So our founder, Shai Datika, said, uh, we should be able to offer a regulated form of an ICO. You know, you should be able to raise capital from investors, retail and institutional investors, for all kinds of projects, but do it in a regulated way. Do it by the book. Provide the investor protections that these investors uh, should be entitled to and follow the regulations. So we applied to the US SEC um, and said we want to run an IPO a proper IPO under the laws of the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, but the asset will be tokenized. The asset will be on-chain, and the SEC was like, whoa, that's, that's great. Okay, let's work together and make this happen. And it took almost three years of back and forth between us and the SEC to actually make that happen. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about some of the things that were needed to make that happen. We then did the, uh, the security token offering, AKA IPO, and it was a great success. We raised uh, $84 million. 
We raised it from retail and mostly retail investors in uh, more than 70, 60 countries around the world. And um, what was particularly exciting about this and particularly groundbreaking was that those investors were able to invest using both crypto and cash and fiat. So we had investments coming into a bank account, but we also had investments going into crypto wallets, which were immediately liquidated for fiat. And this was truly groundbreaking. Um, the tokens were then issued on the, on the Ethereum public blockchain. And um, subsequent to that raise, we then listed that token for trading on our own platform, which is called an ATS in the USA, which is a platform that is regulated uh, to provide the listing and trading of security tokens. So all in all, we were, um, like it or not, we were the torchbearer of the security token space in the USA and indeed globally by, by, by executing such a successful uh, and regulated security token offering. <clears throat> so we now raised that money. Uh, so this is a timeline of what I, what I basically discussed. And, and in 2019, just going back to, to, the, to the specific element that the SEC was, uh, was focusing on was, so what if you uh, have an investor who receives security tokens and they lose their wallet? They lose the, pass, uh, the, the seed phrase of their wallet or their wallet gets hacked. How are you going to handle this situation? Because in a traditional scenario, you could just print another stock certificate and send that to that investor if they lost their stock certificates. And just a year prior to this, the ERC-1404 token format, which is a, a specific token format on the Ethereum blockchain, uh, had been released. And the ERC-1404 format specifically allows the issuer or the administrator of this token to freeze the token and to reissue the token and to handle that specific scenario. So there were technology advancements that were important to making this, uh, this security token offering possible. Um, in 21, as I said, we, we finished the IPO, we started acquiring licenses. Uh, in the United States, you, you have to have multiple licenses, including federal and state licenses to be able to offer the services that we were looking to offer. Uh, and those services are the primary offerings, or security token offerings, as well as the trading of those offerings, as well as the trading of cryptocurrencies. And these are distinctly regulated asset classes, sometimes rolling up to different regulators. Um, in 22, we launched our platform, INX1, and we were able to merge all of these services onto that platform. Uh, and I'll have some screens, screens uh, in a minute. We acquired a transfer agent, which is another element to regulated uh, 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 markets, which is the entity that is responsible for maintaining the register of, of, cert of the assets. We went public in Canada on the, on the Canadian uh, National Exchange. So we are actually the only uh, publicly listed company to have a stock or, a sh or shares trading on a national exchange while we have a token trading on, on an ATS, on a security token platform. Uh, this year we struck some very important partnerships. As you will get to know, uh, partnerships are key in growing any business, especially when it is a, a whole new industry. Uh, the first of those um, partnerships was with uh, a company called Sigpa, and we formed a joint venture called Nabatec, which exists to develop uh, CBDC, central bank digital currencies. Um, and uh, we also struck a relationship with a global leader in uh, crowdfunding called Republic. Um, and we are now in the process of uh, building out that relationship strategically, uh, Republic has a security token that is going to list on INX in the next uh, few weeks. And we are exploring a full uh, uh, acquisition of INX by Republic as part of really growing the capabilities of both companies uh, in this space. On our platform this year, we have seven security token offerings, and there are more that we are negotiating with. 
and we also have primary uh, secondary listings of certain tokens uh, that, are, that have been announced. So at a glance, INX1 is a platform that has a single point of entry for an investor, for a trader. However, behind the scenes of the platform, you have multiple regulators and banking relationships. Um, and we have been able to fuse this experience of the investor of, or of the trader, of the user, into one user interface, into one experience um, where they can trade cryptocurrency assets, vetted cryptocurrency assets. Um, they can trade security tokens, or they can invest in companies that are raising capital in the form of a security token offering. And this was effectively our vision, to offer one platform where you could basically experience the entire end-to-end -end of the security token offering, uh, either as an investor or as an issuer uh, of a security token. So we've done all of this. We've learned the hard way in some cases. And now we're helping others. And whether that is through companies that want to raise capital uh, or investors and making sure they have the right education and the right protections, or also you know, meeting with audiences like yourselves and making sure you understand uh, the space that we're in and, and, and some of the things that we've learned. Um, as the chairman of the, of the Korean Exchange mentioned just now, there was a report by the Boston Consulting Group which says the, the, estimate of the, the, the estimated size of the security token market will be 16 trillion by 2030. I've seen other, ana other uh, uh, analysis that put it higher, some put it lower. The point is we're talking trillions of dollars of assets going on chain. And that's pretty huge, that's pretty exciting. And these assets are really diverse. We're not just talking stocks and bonds and, 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 and the traditional uh, uh, assets people think about. We're talking exciting uh, illiquid assets like classic car collections, uh, like... Um, real estate, like uh, art, art collections. Um, in fact, we have a very exciting security token offering on our platform right now, which is related to um, discovering lost sunken treasures from, uh, uh, from shipwrecks from hundreds and hundreds of years ago. In fact, my, uh, uh, those guys are in the house, welcome. <laughs> um, so this is a hugely, hugely exciting space. Um, it's going to be massive enough that there will be numerous participants, there will be numerous players, whether that's national exchanges, private exchanges, um, or issuers or investors. Um, traditional finance knows this. They've known this for a while. Traditional finance, uh, traditional financial firms, they pay good money to their uh, uh, to their teams that do research and that look at the future and understand the way markets are evolving, these guys know best that this, the future is around the corner. And they understand that if they do not position themselves through the, 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 the regulatory compliance, through the technology, partnerships, um, they will miss out on a huge market. And so these guys are scrambling, they're moving quickly, um, and you will see that this year alone, there have been some sizable announcements uh, about these large players you know, getting involved in this space or, or announcing that they've been involved in this space because they have been involved in this space for a while. Um, notably, you have uh, South Korea's uh, commercial banks and uh, even asset managers making bold public announcements about their preparations for this. <clears throat> Use cases. They're broad, they're very similar to traditional uh, 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 use cases, but there's also some new interesting angles to security token offerings. So equity and debt are your you know, most commonly thought of, uh, of assets that you could, you could tokenize, um, whether that's a company that's giving away equity or a fund or a bond, uh, but you also have cash flow, cash flow uh, security tokens. For example, the INX token entitles its investor or its holder to a 40% share of future profits. This is a non-dilutive way of raising capital, which is also very exciting. So you're raising capital and your investors are receiving a share of profits, revenue, and this is all 
uh, uh, pretty exciting because you're able as a company to define a specific cash flow or a specific revenue stream that you are tokenizing. It doesn't have to be the entire revenue stream of a company. It could just be one specific, uh, one specific revenue stream. Existing private companies, private companies that do not have access to liquid markets, that are not trading on, a, on an exchange, uh, they, they, they would love to be listed on an exchange, like a national exchange like the KRX. But think about the complexity and the cost and the headaches and the, 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 the challenges of getting your company ready for a large IPO. You could actually tokenize the equity in that company and have it list and trade on a tokenization exchange like, like INX. Uh, engagement is another element of security tokens that is really exciting. If you think about sports clubs, uh, celebrity, uh, you know, think about K-pop. Think about these very large uh, uh, entities that have huge fan followings and that are able to actually leverage security token offerings to raise capital, uh, uh, give away uh, a share of you know, royalties or, uh, or, or maybe some VIP access at, at, at some of these events. Um, and this is a very exciting space that is really looking at security token offerings as a way to get engaged with its fans. And then lastly, we have remediation. This is simply where companies might be in trouble, might be fighting for bankruptcy, and you have creditors who are owed uh, 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 by these companies, and typically the creditors will get a, what's called a haircut. They'll get whatever is left of that company's assets, and that will be a significant uh, loss to, to, to their original investments. And you could use a security token offering to convert this uh, 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 to effectively create an IOU. It's to say, you know, you can uh, receive a security token that entitles you to the business when it's being rebuilt, when it is, uh, when, so the business doesn't have to go uh, uh, bankrupt. Um, oh, sorry, it will go bankrupt, but it can be restructured and the subsequent business that exists can continue to pay out a revenue share or, or, or profits to, to those original creditors. So this is also very exciting. And we have seen a use case of that in the, in the market already with the Bitfinex hack in 2016. So if you want to look into, the, into that story, you'll find it's very, very interesting and one of the very early amazing examples of how a security token offering can really uh, uh, transform mar markets as we know them. So what are these advantages um, uh, for issuers? Like I said, a security token offering can be non-dilutive. That means you're not diluting the equity of the company. You're not diluting the, uh, the, the, the existing shareholders. Of course, if you do a security token offering like that, like we did with, the, uh, with our raise, you will share some of the revenues or the cash flows with those investors. So there is some kind of dilution of, of profit sharing, but not the, the equity of the company itself. And if I take a specific example, uh, let's, let's look at a real estate uh, um, establishment. Think about a, you know, a resort, a golf course uh, a result, resort. They're sitting on a very illiquid asset. It's a giant resort. It's not something you can just sell and buy on an open market. But if you fractionalize this huge resort into you know, 100 million tokens, and you can sell off these individual tokens in, these, in little portions to your, uh, to your investors, you raise enough capital to improve the services that you're offering, to improve the resort, and you pay out you know, uh, uh, a revenue share with those, uh, to those investors. And um, now imagine that, this go that these investors who own parts of, these, uh, parts of the golf course are able to go into a DeFi pool, right, and uh, uh, lock in into a liquidity pool and basically use their ownership of this golf course, as tiny as it is, as uh, collateral to take out a loan from this DeFi ecosystem. Now that scenario is pretty exciting, it doesn't exist yet, but there are no limits to, to when you start to explore where security tokens can take you. If you think about the, uh, the common loyalty programs today, the ability for you to uh, take your investors and your token holders and give them special uh, uh, VIP rights and special um, 
um, special perks. Uh, this is a whole new way of an investor becoming engaged by, uh, by, the, by the company that they've invested in that isn't really available today. Um, through security token offerings, you're accessing a global retail audience, at least when you launch, when you launch a security token offering on INX. Because of our regulations and, our, and the way we structured the business, we are actually able to take uh, investors from over 70 countries around the world. And this is on a reverse solicitation basis. So this is really important to point out. It's about understanding regulation, understanding how uh, you're able to interact with investors from countries around the world. Um, 24 by 7 secondary markets, including weekends. So again, traditional financial markets will open and close 8.30 to 4 or something like that, and they're closed on the weekends. And if news about an asset comes out, say, on a Friday, you have to wait until Monday mar uh, market open before you can actually execute trades. This is a whole new transformation that security token uh, platforms like INX are bringing uh, to the space. And again, like I said in, in, the, in the example of our, our raise, you can actually access investors who are very crypto native, who are sitting on crypto assets, and make, uh, create crypto rails for them to invest in your, in your token offerings. K-pop. I guarantee that this will be one of the highlights of Korea's tokenization uh, uh, story. Um, there are, I speak with lots of uh, uh, agents that represent artists or represent uh, clubs and things like that who are really trying to understand how they can create this engagement model. Um, think about the younger demographic that we're really dealing with now, right? You have a whole new set of generation that is coming into the financial markets, uh, the Gen Z, and these guys, as we know, they work in slightly different ways. They think in slightly different ways. And it's really important for us to understand that such a young demographic has to, has to be, is looking for technology advancements. It's looking for a tribe. It's looking for ways to transform the world, looking for ways to move away from the older ways of doing things. So when you look at Korea's uh, uh, digital native um, population, it's extremely dynamic, it's very young, you have a very impressive balance between male and female representation. These guys are technologically savvy, so that makes Korea a really, uh, it's like going to be a hotbed, in my opinion, for security token offerings. So, finally, looking at the lessons uh, that I think I want to impart and, and leave you guys is, you know, to the regulators in the house, um, it's really imp important to make um, the regulations as easy to understand as possible, right? So if, you, if regulators can take an existing regulatory framework that exists for traditional finance and adopt as much of that, as much of that existing language, as much of that existing framework, it makes it a lot easier for the security token offering uh, uh, exchanges and, and, and providers to comply with that. And it's really important that they understand this regulation and don't make interpretations without legal counsel. This is really critical. And to these exchanges and platforms that are going to offer these services and to the issuers, it is very important to be compliant. There is a reason regulations are complex and there is a reason compliance is expensive and it is there to protect investors because there are people out there who will look to take advantage. Uh, at INX, I'll give you an example. We have over 100 policies and procedures that we maintain on a regular basis. And these procedures are uh, anything to do with KYC, knowing your customer and, and accepting new, new, uh, new investors, to anti-money laundry, um, to how we train our staff, to how we protect data. So it isn't a walk in the park. It is really important to have a compliance, uh, compliance framework. To the issuers of security tokens, whether that's real estate projects or art, it is really important that you are bold and you create an exciting offering. But be easy to understand. Have a very clear value proposition. Why should an investor invest in your project? And when the investor reads your investment, your, uh, your, your, your memorandum, it's important to make it clear and easily digestible. Distribution refers to promoting your raise. You can have the greatest offering around, but if you're not marketing it, if you're not promoting it out to the, to the right public and promoting it in the right way, 
uh, you will not achieve the kind of success that you need. So it's really important to have uh, a promotion and marketing and to start that early. Technology. We talk about technology a lot. It's exciting, you know, blockchain and smart contracts and, and so on. But that's just a mechanism. It's just a means to achieving an improvement in financial markets. So I think we need to stay on point and say we are improving financial markets. We're providing new avenues for investors and for, for uh, entities to raise capital. And the technology is an enabler. Liquidity, mass adoption, this is the goal. This is the dream. And we are going to get there. But it is important that retail is engaged uh, because there is a lot of uh, uh, participation in current financial markets uh, that is not coming from retail investors. And this is where security token offerings and the excitement of blockchain, I think, is going to change that. And so being able to bring in the retail and speak the language of retail uh, is going to be key. And then finally, for the institutional players, of course, the institutions are going to be key participants. Um, make it easy for institutions to access a security token offering. What does that mean? A lot of institutions, banks, family offices, and, 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 and the likes, they log into certain types of platforms on a regular basis. And these platforms are full of traditional instruments. So rather than trying to necessarily get these entities to leave those platforms and go to a different platform, how about collaborating with those existing platforms and adding digital assets and security tokens to those existing uh, offerings? So to close, I will say the security token offering space, it's, it, it's happening. It's happening right now. It hasn't, it hasn't matured and it's going to take time, but there is no doubt in my mind, in our minds, um, that this space is, is, is moving forward, it's pushing, and a lot of the groundwork is actually already in place. It just needs to be formalized, it needs to be put into, into law, into regulation, and we will see uh, uh, the mass adoption that we need. Um, as thought leaders, we wrote a book. Uh, we call it the INX Way, uh, and I welcome you to uh, scan that QR code and uh, visit our website and, and get a copy uh, get a copy of the book. Uh, and Kamsa uh, Amnida, thank you very much. Uh, and I think uh, I can take some questions, uh, a little bit of a QA session. So if anyone has any, any questions, I'd be, uh, be very happy to answer them. OK. I guess my presentation was crystal clear then. Ah, we have one. Two, please. The, gen the gentleman. One sec, he'll give you a mic. I understood that you acquired uh, licenses in the US. How crucial was that to tie fiat money into the existing offerings? Was it like 60% of the whole job, as far as I understand? Thank you for that. So the question is, you know, as part of the licenses that we acquired in the United States, how much of that was related to the ability to, to receive ca capital uh, fiat in the form of investments? Well, I can tell you that our ATS, the platform where, our to where tokens list and trade, is regulated by FINRA, which is one of the, the regulators in the United States. And there are certain rules around uh, how you run such an exchange. For example, the token, the INX token, must trade against the United States dollar. So the INX instrument is INX slash USD. It cannot trade against Bitcoin or Ethereum or a stable coin. Um, so in that regard, there has to be a fiat rail attached to the platform so that when a trade happens, there is the on-chain settlement of the token and there is a cash settlement within a banking institution. So 100%, the regulation makes it very clear uh, in the ways in which fiat is being used to trade this asset. However, at the same time, as I said, we were able to receive investments in the form of crypto in that token. And that is an SEC rule, the United States Security Exchange Commission, that allows you, or allows us as part of our IPO prospectus, to take um, investments in the form of crypto. So, it's our responsibility to create the bridge between where investors are investing using crypto to investors are trading tokens using fiat. Hope that answers the question. 
please. Uh, today, I really thank you for your uh, great uh, presentation. Uh, I'm worried about that you mentioned some of your presentation is uh, one platform. I mean, some of our mix of uh, existing crypto asset and uh, futures uh, security tokens. Because uh, as I'm the uh, CIO of, of Bicel Stentad, we are also the, uh, the tokenized the issue company. So Korean regulators also worry about uh, some of uh, yeah, crypto relates, like such as ICO. Because uh, recently, uh, so far, the lots of the uh, un, un, unproved people guy, for example, they found some uh, great big uh, treasures and they issued the ICO. That is a big problem. So I, I in personally, I, I don't want to some of the perfect uh, is a mixture of uh, existing crypto and security because they are clearly there because that is not a just like not a digital asset only just mm -hmm. is a financial products should be more the you mentioned some of the uh, uh, regulated KYC AML we I, I'm sure that we more the set up to really high level there because we stabilize and fully all of guys fully their uh, trust in the new the security market is very important. I, yes, I think I understand the, uh, some of the, the, there's a question in there around, you know, maybe having a, a, a single firm uh, uh, operating both crypto and security tokens and traditional uh, assets on chain. Well, I can tell you, you know, INX is a, it's a group of companies really, right? You have our publicly traded, a uh, publicly listed entity, uh, and then you have INX Digital, which is a crypto, the crypto service provider, which is regulated, uh, um, you know, uh, it has a, uh, an MSB license from FinCEN, it has 47 uh, money transmitter licenses, um, and it, is, uh, it has its own banking relationships. And then you have INX Securities, which is rolling up to FINRA, which is running the ATS platform. Um, all those cryptocurrencies that are trading uh, are very carefully vetted um, on, on the platform. We follow all of the guideline that's currently available around listing any of these assets. And so, uh, uh, and, and, and there's another entity that I mentioned earlier on, which is called the transfer agent which is specifically an agent that, and it is an SEC registered ag uh, agency or, or company, sorry, that is responsible for maintaining the register of the, uh, of the asset um, and the cap, the, the cap table. So you, you, you definitely have to comply with the regulations that exist. Um, and believe you me, we have had numerous tests and, and, and audits from, from these various institutions. And as long as you have that compliance framework, as long as you're following the rules, you know, we sleep well at night. Um, and I'm sure, I'm sure many uh, other players in the space cannot say that, but it is really uh, uh, possible to run these, to provide these services in full compliance uh, with the regulations that exist. Okay, no more questions? Ah, got a few more. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, and I understand there are like a lot of different regulations between like between countries. Can you, can you just uh, between countries? Yeah. So how do INX solve for issuing a lot of different assets from different countries since there are they have all, lots of different regulations? Thank you for the question. The question is to do with you know, how INX is providing its services uh, to uh, issuers in different countries. So under the United States uh, Securities and Exchange uh, laws, um, and this is to do with something called the Jobs Act. So during the uh, Obama administration, a specific set of, of legislation was put in place that allows companies raise capital from the public. And there is different ways within this uh, legislation for companies to do that. For example, companies could raise money from US accredited investors only. Or companies can raise capital from non-US retail investors. Um, 
Interestingly, I should point out that the chairman of the board of directors of INX, David Weald, is actually the architect of the Jobs Act. And so we're very much experienced in that regard uh, as to how this works. So it simply means a company can be located in, in, in a country outside of the United States, but it can still raise capital using United States regulations via a United, a United States platform like ours. And so when you look at the INX website and you look at those seven companies that are raising capital right now, and in fact the, the upcomings um, are from different countries, and they leverage this regulatory framework that the SEC has put in place through the Jobs Act, uh, which we provide as the solution for companies uh, outside of the US to raise capital. And specifically that regulation S means that a company, any company, even a company in Korea, can list a security token on INX and have access to investors from uh, you know, 70 plus countries around the world. Hope that answers. I think we had another question uh, in the back. Tonkunkoni,Bigugesomon, 어, 형국이 아닐까 싶어요. 그래서 그런 부분 때문에 사실 성장세가 좀 더디지 않을까. 그러니까 저희가 어, 들어가는 ROI가 안, 논, 안 나온다고 해야 되나? 뭐 하여튼 그런 부분 때문인 것 같은데 지금 INX가 바라보시는 향후의 성장이 언제쯤 어떻게 더될 건지 그런 기대치가 있으실까요? Thank you. Uh, the question there was um, you know, really to do with the the growth of this space, the adoption of the space, the, maybe the structure of some of the instruments that will help the space uh, uh, or that will accelerate the adoption in the space. I think what we're seeing here is pretty natural, right? Every time you've had transformation in, uh, in the human story, um, you know, it goes through a specific cycle, specific adoption curve. And there are certain events that will trigger and create that accelerated mass adoption. Um, and whether that is a global recognized brand that will come out with a security token offering and, uh, and maybe with a brand new product or a new version of an existing product and they will say, hey, we are raising capital to develop this product or to bring this product to market and this specific product will, uh, uh, will, will represent a cash flow that will be distributed to investors. It seems you know, maybe outlandish to think about this today, um, but the framework will exist. Uh, for example, in our case, the framework already exists under the US uh, uh, SEC and in the way INX has been set up. So, um, correct, in the last you know, couple of years, we haven't seen you know, the supercharged adoption, but let's also look at the macro economy. Let's look at the fact that we are in a you know, in a bear market. We are seeing a very challenging time right now for companies to raise capital. We see VC activity is basically, you know, uh, uh, nowhere in comparison to where it was just a year and a half to two years ago. So I think taking everything into consideration, it is understandable that there is, uh, 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 there has been some, you know, uh, it's been slower than a lot of people expect. And like you said, as a, as a, you know, for those of us who are in this space, who are inside this uh, digital assets, you know, security tokens and crypto space, you know, sometimes we, we, we need to kind of just listen to the outsiders who are, you know, completely unaware of what we're doing and, and kind of stay balanced in terms of, you know, how, how we set the expectations and the timelines. Uh, but I think what we're just ex what we're waiting for now is one of those critical those events that will trigger the critical mass adoption, um, and of course, the comp the regulation has to be in place, right? The regulation is really the gating item. So back in February, when the Korean authorities uh, made those very positive announcements around uh, security token offerings and the framework, 
that already kick-started a lot of an, an acceleration. Uh, hence, we have events like this. You know, this is, uh, this is the first event of its kind, and this is going to be an annual event, as I understand, going forward. Um, so the building blocks are definitely being put in place, and I think we're going to see that adoption coming very soon. Yeah, for the sake of time, I think we have to wrap up. Thank you very much. My pleasure.